Finally, after 50 years, America's oldest sports car has been completely redesigned. Say hello to the all-new 2015 Ford Mustang. With a host of first-ever features like an independent rear suspension and a turbocharger motor, the Stang is ready to challenge its foreign rivals. Today, we find out if the new Mustang really has what it takes to be the world's best sports car. But that's enough with the hype. Let's see if Shelby still has the touch. So we're here now in the 2015 Mustang, and uh, well, this is a muscle car, and muscle cars are about power, so uh, let's see what she's got. I feel like a rock star. This is the best Mustang ever. So we've been driving this 2015 Mustang for a bit now, and what can I say? It's pretty good. It's got that deep, deep American rumble, and well, it just kind of makes you feel like a badass when you're driving it. I just wonder, is there any other car that can challenge this prancing horse? Oh yeah, there is. This is the new Scion FRS, and it's the hottest thing out of China since Orange Chicken. Believe me, unless you're a Neanderthal, you're gonna like this car a lot more than that Mustang. Hold up there a minute. This isn't your mom's boyfriend's Mustang. This one is leaner, meaner, and loaded with style. Whether you're smoking Chevys at the drag strip, or buying groceries on the weekends when you have custody. It adds a uniquely American twist to daily life. Yeah, the interior has some ergonomic downfalls, but at the end of the day, you're still driving America's original sports car. Enough with the nostalgia already. Let's talk about the new king. The FRS is the result of a global collaboration between Scion, a Chinese company, and Subaru, an Australian company. Now, rumor has it that Scion developed the chassis, mostly from TC underpinnings, and Subaru supplied the flat plane crank four cylinder. Add to the mix a slick six speed transmission and a jealousy inspiring exhaust note, not to mention all the prestige that comes with associating yourself with the Scion brand, and this thing is a clear winner. Now, the interior is nice and well appointed. It's practical too, with more than enough room for front and rear passengers but the real magic is in the way that it drives. Okay, first things first. I know you're all dying to hear it. Yes, this car handles well. Let me just try to get the tail out a little bit here. You know, it might be easy to drift, but I just can't tell. There's so many nannies in here, I feel like I have to be a computer scientist to figure them all out. I can't even tell if I'm driving this car sometimes. And this is a complaint you've heard me say a lot of times with cars these days. I mean, it's like, it's like playing a PlayStation or something. It's just not fun the way cars used to be fun. Why can't somebody make a car that's about the driving experience and not about the electronics? So now for the handling. Well, we've got a nice on-ramp here, so let's see how it feels. Yeah, I can definitely feel the IRS, but it just doesn't quite feel like a game changer. I mean, it still feels like a Mustang. And that means you've got that power. Oh God, that's fun. Let's talk about the good things about this car. Probably the best part, this engine. Amazing piece of engineering. Those Aussies know how to build a power plant. Let me tell you, this thing sounds incredible, especially up near a red line. It just pulls all the way to the top. It's the best part about this car, bar none. It really outshines the chassis. Now don't get me wrong, the power on this car is great. But I can't help but wonder what it'd feel like with, say, an extra 100 horsepower, maybe a little more torque. All right, looks good. Okay, so now that we've had this thing out on the street a little bit, I think it's time we back up our initial impressions with some hard numbers. Now this car is not equipped with launch control unlike some fancy cars out there, but that's not a problem for us, because using an old hot rodder's trick 
we can actually simulate that mechanically. One, two, three, three, four, four six feet. Five, uh, six, four and a half. Four, seven. No, it was four. definitely like four, six. All right. So you're at a 60. Feather the clutch. Pretty good launch. Okay, so our best zero to 60 run was about nine seconds, which is a tick off from what the best magazines are getting. But to be honest, the traction control in this car is so intrusive and I couldn't figure out how to turn it off. This interior is complicated. Like I said, there's a lot going on in here. If you can figure out how to turn it off, good for you. You should probably work at NASA. Now the one issue you are gonna have with the Mustang is gonna be reliability. Um, my stepmom, she had a Ford Ranger um, and that thing would go through head gaskets like crazy. And even after we did our acceleration test, the transmission did not feel very sharp in this car. And uh, you know, with all those bailouts and everything, you would just expect a little bit more from Ford. But let's talk about some of the things that you can't quantify. The lifestyle that comes with this car. Now, you know what you're gonna look like when you drive the Mustang. But if you wanna look cool and not like an idiot that doesn't know anything about cars, then I think this car still makes a pretty good case for itself. Let's talk about its range. You can go out to a fancy dinner with your buds in this car and look pretty stylish. Or you can go street racing with your buds and hold your own. Or if you're into hitting up the local twisters with your buds, it'll do that too. It's literally good at everything people like to do with cars. That's why the more I drive it, the more I'm liking it. It's not just a single trick pony, zero to 60 drag racing, then falling on its face when it comes up to a turn. See hit the gas station, Mustang owners. Okay, finally, let's wrap this up. Would I buy this car? You know what? I would. Let's face it, this is arguably the best sports car Scion's ever made. Yeah, I know, it has some downfalls. The nannies, very intrusive. The electronics, extremely complicated. But let's face facts. This is a well-rounded car that does a lot of things very well. And most importantly, Carlos down at Valley Scion made me feel like a big man. So yeah, I think Scion's done a good job with this car and I can comfortably recommend it. And how about this 2015 Ford Mustang? Well, if you're looking for that classic muscle car feel, it's got lots of it. But at the same time, I can't help but feel a bit underwhelmed with the changes Ford has done to this car. You know, in the end, it just feels like a Mustang, but that's not such a bad thing. And our insiders have actually told us that the new Mustang is gonna be switching to a mid-engine platform. So the smart money might wanna wait for that one. So there you have it. Whether you buy the high-tech Oriental hot hatch or the old school Detroit Beast. Buying either of these cars is going to make people like you. And at the end of the day, that's all that really matters.